Welcome to CAD Tutorials and in this video I'll be covering practice problem 8.9. If you haven't subscribed to my channel please subscribe and if you like this video just go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Right. So let's get straight into the question. We have a switch over here. So we have a switching action which takes place at t is equal to 0 which means before 0 or at time less than 0 we had no excitation in the circuit and therefore we can conclude we can conclude that V0 and I0 are both 0, right? We now move on to look at the time just after 0. So just after 0, when this is closed, we can form a... At this top node, we can do KCL. At that top node, so I can take this value as going down and that is going down as well as already indicated over there. So we're going to take this at time zero. So C D V over D T at time zero, which is the current which goes down along this path. And this is going in, so you're going to say negative three. And here this is going down. This is I of zero, which is the inductor current is equal to zero. Now I'm going to proceed to find dv over dt at time 0. So dv over dt at time 0, we're going to rearrange everything. So this goes to the other side. This is basically 0. So we're going to have 3 divided by c, and c is 1 over 20, which means our dv over dt at time 0 is equal to 60 volts per second. Right? Now 60 volts per second for the value of that. So we now have two initial conditions for that. We're going to now proceed to to so okay let's revise the steps which you should take for general second order circuits so the first step you should find your initial conditions right we did that the second step you're going to find you're going to turn off the independent sources so turn off independent sources you're going to turn them off then you are going to find the form of transient response then the third step you're going to obtain the steady state values so you're going to obtain the steady state values then the final step you're going to find the total response all right so these are the steps we've already found the initial conditions we're now going to turn off the independent sources and find the kind of transient response so we're going to have one independent source we're going to turn that off and find the type of transient response it's going to look something like this. Now, if you look at this, it is a series RLC. So you're going to use the series RLC formulas to find our damping factor. So for series RLC, the damping factor is equal to R divided by 2L, right? And our resonant frequency is the same for both configurations or any other configuration it's one divided by square root of lc so substituting the value which is 14 divided by 2 multiply by that so it's 14 divided by 4 it's basically 3.5 right so 4 times 3 3.5 so 4 times 3 is 12 and then plus 2 which is half of 4 just give you 14 okay that's fine so this is the value in lapis per second and this here we have L, which is 2 multiplied by C. So we have 1 over 10, we have the square root of 1 over 10. And we are basically just going to have the square root of 10. So 1 divided by 1 over square root of 10 is going to be square root of 10. This is in radians per second, right? So now I have these two values, and we now evaluate which one is bigger. So you find that the damping factor is actually greater than omega naught, which means we expect an overdamped response. So we've now found the type of transient response, and we can proceed to find the general form of that kind of response, which looks something like this. So V of T is equal to A1 e to the S1t plus A2 e to the S2t. So finding S1 and S2, which are the roots of the characteristic equations, we're going to use this formula over here. So substituting the values in that formula, you are going to find your roots to be S1 should be negative 2 and S2 should be negative 5. So these are two roots and I'm going to substitute them into our transient response equation. So V of T 
is a1 e to the minus 2t and we have plus a2 e to the 5t. That is our transient response without finding the coefficients. So now if you look, this v is over here and we have the inductor current or everything just basically has the same current because they're in series, which means we can apply, we can use this to find i, right? So what would be i considering that we now have a basic formula for v? So you know this formula which says i, which is the inductor, which is the capacitor current, is equals to c dv over dt. So that is what we're basically going to use to find our i, which is the same i across ele all elements. We are asked to find v and i in the question. So this is the formula which you're going to use. i of t is basically equals to c dv over dt. And this is basically the derivative of this formula which you have up here. So that is what we're going to do in the end when we find the total response. So now done, done that, we can now proceed to this part, which is finding the steady state values. So the steady state values, we now assume that the circuit is in steady state. So for time approaching infinity, we're going to find our steady state values. So a capacitor becomes an open circuit and an inductor becomes a short circuit. So let's find the final values given that kind of behavior. So this is open. And here we have three, then here we have four, because this is now shorted out. So the current only flows in that direction. It's only going to be in that direction, and therefore I infinity is equal to three amperes, right? I infinity is equal to three amperes, and we're now going to find V infinity. There's no current flowing through here, which means this V spans this from the top node to the bottom node. So multiplying this three by this three, which goes this side, by the four four ohms, which is over here, will give us V. So V is basically 12 volts, because the four multiplied by the three amperes, which goes there, is parallel to our V. So now I have 12 volts. So now I have both of these values in the steady state. Or now I have the steady state values. So I can tick that off. So all that's left is to find the total response, which is the last point over here. So let's do that quickly. And now I have the final value. And for the total response, V of T is equal to Vs plus A1 e to the, we found it to be e to the minus 2T plus A2 e to the minus 5T, right? So now we're going to find the coefficients. This Vs is basically just 12, which is just found as the final value. So V at 0, what did, did we see if V at 0 was? It was 0. Therefore, we're going to say 12. And then substitute 0 wherever we see T. So plus A1 plus A2 is equal to 0. So A1 is equal to the negative of A2 plus 12. This is the first formula which we're going to use shortly. I mean, also find our dv over dt at time 0 to be 60. So dv over dt, we're going to basically differentiate this. So it's 0, it's zero over there, and it's minus uh, 2a1 at time 0. Let's make sure of that at time 0. So negative 2a1, negative 5a2 is equal to 60. We now found our... What's this? Our A1 to be negative of that. So where we see A1, we're going to substitute negative of A2 plus that. So, which means we're going to have something like this. The, the negatives are going to cancel out at this point over here. So we're going to have 2 A2 plus 12, negative 5 A2 is equal to 16, right? So multiplying through, we're going to have 2 A2, subtract that, it's going to be negative 3 A2. 3 multiplied by that is 36, right? We're going to have 36 over there. Then we're going to have is equal to 60. Then we're going to have negative 3a2 is equal to, taking this to the other side of the equation, it's going to be 60, subtract that, should be 24. Dividing both sides by negative 3 is going to give us negative 8. So we have negative 8 is our value for a2, right? That is a value which we found for our A2. Let's see if we ha haven't made a mistake somewhere quickly. So after differentiating here, we have negative 2A2 and we have negative 5A2. Then over here, we have 
here we had 12 and then that 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 equating to zero so a1 that and then i substituted this in here and the negatives cancel out that negative and this negative cancel out and we have 2 a2 plus 12 then we had negative 5 a2 so let's see i said 2 a2 subtract that is negative that so this multiply that is 24 i made a mistake here so 2 multiplied by that is 24 it's 24 which means taking it to the other side is going to give me 36 right 36 and 36 divided by negative 3 is negative 12. that is the correct value of a2 which is negative 12 right after finding that a2, we're going to find, we're going to proceed to find our a1. So a1, substituting our a2, which we found, which is negative 12 plus 12, is going to give us 0. And therefore, a1 is 0. So now I have the coefficients. We can substitute them in the total response, which we have up here. So let's say that down here. So v of t is equal to the final value of 12. And we found our a1 to be 0, so we'll admit everything which is multiplied by a1. And finally, we have minus 12, e to the minus 5, t in volts. And you can just factor this out and say 1, subtract e to the minus 5, t in volts. And that is your v of t for time greater than 0. So that is that. That is your value for v of t. And we said to find i of t, we're basically just going to differentiate that value. So doing that quickly, for the transient response, we can basically just omit this, which is the total response of that. It doesn't really matter because it was going to be zero if we differentiate that. So taking the transient response and finding our i of t before we add, so it's good. basically i of t is equal to a i s plus c d v over d t. This part covers the transient response. So our is 3, which is our final value, which we found previously. It's 3 amperes. And we're going to have C. Our C, the value of C is 1 over 20. And we're going to differentiate this. It's going to be 0. And this is going to be minus 5 multiplied by negative 12, which is 60. Then we're going to have that. Which means our I of T is basically our I of T. If I did that correctly, let me just check. So, yes, okay. So that is what we have over here. Let's see, let's see, let's see. So differentiating that, we have zero. Differentiating that, we have five, which multiplies that over there, which is gonna be five multiplied by that, which is 60, which I just found here. Then we're gonna have three plus 3e e to the minus 5t, and our i of t is going to be 3 factor out 1 plus e to the minus 5t in amperes, and that is for time greater than 0. Now, before we put it close to this question, let's take this up here. So I wrote that i of t is equal to 3 plus 3e e to the minus that, where this part is a result of the derivative which was computed from i is equal to c dv over dt, right? But now, let's analyze this. v, the positive of v is on this side, so the current would actually flow like that. But this i over here, as indicated, flows in the opposite direction. And therefore, to this derivative over here, we have to introduce a negative sign. Right, let me explain that again. V, we said this V is positive if the current were flowing downwards. But this I is flowing in the opposite direction, and that is why we have to introduce a negative. And therefore, I of T is equal to 3, 1, subtract E to the minus 5T amperes.